Hey everybody, Dr. Dave Mark was here and I wanted to touch on a topic that can actually be really touchy and that's hormones. I have a lot of patients in the age group of about 40 to 60-ish in the female category that are dealing with hormonal uh, symptoms and have a perceived hormonal imbalance and, and they're seeking help for that and sometimes they'll work with practitioners that uh, spend more time working on how they feel rather than on a numerical basis and others that work specifically on a numerical basis and don't care how they feel and the patient actually gets caught in the middle that's oftentimes where functional medicine comes into play as part of this topic, I think that it's really important to understand that hormones are not a standalone system. Every tissue in the body relies on the communication of hormones because they are steroids that actually allow for communication of cells and uh, create certain activities that are supposed to be happening at certain times of the month and at certain ages. And when they get out of balance, things don't feel right. And you can start to have symptoms, particularly in that 40 to 60 group. It might be things like brain fog or uh, vaginal dryness or loss of muscle tone or fatigue, dry skin, weak nails, weak hair, emotional instabilities. You know, they're, they're really important, but they are not standalone. I think it is important for everybody to have a good baseline and understand how hormones, how they come to be. Hormones, as a sterol, are all fatty-based. And so your own fatty acid metabolism is really important in how you regulate your own hormones. And so I actually like to look at everything related to fatty acid metabolism. So on a blood panel, that's actually gonna start with your lipids and your blood sugar, and then it's going to break it down from there. So on the blood sugar side, I wanna see what your three-month average is, so your A1C, what your insulin's looking like. And then over on the fatty acid side, I wanna see what your triglycerides are looking at, like particularly, and what your LDLs are looking like, because that's the pool from which your body draws to make much of your estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Many people don't realize that your, your lipid panel is so intimately entwined to your hormones. And then downstream from that, I wanna see what your DHEA is and your cortisol because your adrenal glands that produce both of those hormones are directly related to how well you're going to manage your sex hormones. Because if a person is under continual stress, it's not the time to reproduce. And so you're going to see a change in your hormone balance as your cortisol goes up. And if you're like a stress eater, and so you're driving insulin and cortisol simultaneously, you can count on your hormones being imbalanced. Just, just count on it. And so for that individual, giving them more sex hormones is not the answer. Managing their stress is going to be much more important and impactful than giving them hormone replacement at that point in time. And people need to understand this hierarchy of events so they don't start sticking their cart before the horse and actually double down on the original problem. So then looking out from there, if you understand the, the cortisol and the, the DHEA, and now you can start looking at your hormones. So you got your, your estrogens, which is estradiol, estrone, and estriol. You got your progesterone, you got your testosterone, and then your sex hormone binding globulin. And your sex hormone binding globulin really tells you how efficiently you're using all of these hormones that we're talking about. And that one is also going to be directly related to a stress response. And it can also uncover some of the, the clues about why somebody might appear on a lab to have adequate hormonal balance, but not feel like it. Because if they're under a lot of stress or their body has this heavy metabolic burden of just junk, like they've been a, a painter or they're around people that smoke or formaldehyde or they drink out of plastic bottles or you fill in the blank. Junk from the environment can clog up your sex hormone receptors. And so then you don't actually get the hormones that are supposed to be bound therein and it can throw off your sex hormone binding globulin. Well, this leads right into that next topic of if I'm toxic, and I can't move stuff in and out of the receptor cleft, even if I'm giving my body more hormones, I still might not feel well. 
And so this is where your detox pathways come in to be super duper important. Understanding those pathways isn't just a liver enzyme test. It's much broader than that. And, and it really does take sitting down and talking to people about, okay, what, what do you do on a daily basis relative to stress? What's the quality of your water? What are your potential exposures to things like mold or these uh, fat soluble toxins in the environment. So that would be a situation where you actually are the backpack. You're actually wearing this metabolic burden of toxins and putting more into the system at that time is not a solution to the plan. And so that would entail actually identifying how best to eliminate these things from the body so that your pathways can actually start to open up and run more efficiently. Now, chronologically, there is a change in terms of the volume of hormones that a body needs. And so those numbers do change from pre-menopause to post. But at no time in your life do you not need hormonal input, okay? It's just you would hope that your body can self-regulate, but not all bodies can. And so there are times where exogenous hormone input can be very helpful. And when you look at the, the bell curve of options in that camp, not all of it is created equally and not every body is going to respond equally well to each option within that camp. So it is important to approach this in a, a very logical, pragmatic way. So I like the evaluation first, get to understand what your unique obstacles are to this conversation what your actual metabolic state is, if you have any roadblocks in place that need to be removed before you actually start to facilitate those pathways. And then if you do need to facilitate the pathways, now you can start to look at this menu of options of things to use. And there's a number of things in both the botanical realm and in the natural realm for uh, compounding of natural hormones before you ever resort to go into the synthetics. But there are times where that camp too is necessary. So I'm not excluding anything. I'm just saying you need to find what's right for your body. And another thing is that you don't necessarily need hormonal support forever. Sometimes it's a bridge to get you to another point of stability where your body then can kind of pick up and carry on from where you left off once all those systems are in place. So, I hope the, the message is received that hormones and the conversation of hormonal imbalance isn't as simple as just looking at a number on a test and taking a drug. It's not that simple. You need to understand that each human is unique and our life story really dictates why we are where we're at and that story needs to be taken into consideration. And the things that I shared with you allow you to evaluate that story and then make appropriate changes as may or may not be needed. Find yourself a good functional medicine practitioner that can work through these things with you. Do the appropriate labs, ask the appropriate questions, work yourself up in an appropriate manner so that you're not just guessing. I hope that's comforting and gives you a little bit more hope to know that there are answers out there and that those answers can help you alleviate the brain fog, the hot flashes, moisten the skin, and give you your vitality of life back because hormones really are important, but they're not necessarily that simple. So I hope that answers some questions and motivates you to take some action. Be well.